Hey trappers, Dale Billingsley here, Billingsley Brand Lures. So we're uh, we're out on the beaver line this morning, uh, just kind of getting started really. Haven't got a whole lot of sets out, but hopefully by the end of the day I'll have a few more in. Uh, got a nice beaver tied up down here. Um, we'll turn things around and uh, let you get a look at him. Stay with me. All right, guys, that's a nice old beaver. I couldn't really show you to him alive because I didn't bring my uh, my tripod down here with me because it's just another thing i got to pack up out of here but anyway we caught him here in a snare i'll uh we'll get him out and uh get set remade and i'll uh show y'all what i do here all right guys this is all i've done just uh hang the loop back here oh right at the water's edge got my lure stick up there just slicked up a spot may look like a beaver going up and down there and that's it pretty simple pretty effective Anyway, we'll uh, get wallered up out of here. This is a pretty deep, steep bridge. About all these are this way, though, on this creek. So, anyway, we'll get him wallered up out of here, and you'll get some more. All right, guys, we got plenty of beaver sign here. They've been coming up this point here. I snare them here on this point every year. Uh, they've been going up in here and... and uh, Digging a little underneath that willow tree, eating the young tender roots that are just kind of, you know, those tree grows new roots every year. So they eat them young tender roots. So anyway, we're going to drop a snare right in there somewhere. And then I think I'll try to ease off down below somewhere there and put in a, a caster mound with a foothold. But this will also be a caster mound just with a snare. So stay with me. We'll, uh, we'll get these things going here and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. All right, so the first thing you need to do is, is either use your boot or use your, your spade. And I like to use my spade to uh, cut a trough and a channel to funnel that beaver up into. Okay? Give him a nice, give him a nice little opening here to, to get there. And then take your, step right off into it. Take your boot and kind of slick it up good, make it look like the beaver's been going up and down right there quite a bit. Make it look like he's been using it pretty good. And then I also like to take my spade and kind of give it a few, just give it a few scratch marks to make it look authentic. Get my sleeves rolled up here. There ain't nothing worse than having wet sleeves all day. Then, uh, just throw your mound of mud and leaves up here on the bank. You want to get it up there, oh, 18, 24 inches up, somewhere in there, to uh, so that way that uh, that beaver's got plenty of room to go between, you know, pass through your snare to get up to it. I'm gonna take out my handy dandy old timer knife here. And I take a Nice chunk of maple. Get that thing out of the camera. Sorry about that. Take a nice little piece of maple tree here, maple limb, and kind of shave it up, peel it up, make it look authentic like a beaver's chewed on it. Just for, for eye appeal. Beaver, I don't think beaver have very good eyesight, but I think they got way better noses than what people think they do. Anyway, peel that up good knife away and uh, take out a bottle of Iowa silver here my thoughts on lure if a little will do a little good then a lot will do a lot of good don't I mean you got to stop and think about it guys lure is the cheapest thing between you and that animal lure and bait is I mean the absolute cheapest thing there is in the grand scheme of it all, I mean, take the cost of your traps, your truck, you know, your time, everything, lure and bait is cheap. So, take our snare here. And, uh, get it uncoiled. I've explained this before, but for those of you that may have missed it, I'll go through it again. Seven feet of seven by seven, three thirty seconds for the, for the tail. Then approximately three foot of 
one by 19, five sixty fourth. And I kind of forgot to load this, so we're gonna we're gonna give her a little load here while we're down here. Doesn't take much. There we go. Makes that loop slide a little faster and gives a little more shape, round instead of teardrop. Put our put our loop on our support wire there. Go ahead and put our stake in. You can put these things in pretty fast, guys. I'm going a little slow here because I'm trying to talk and explain it all, but you get in a rhythm, it don't take long. Then just uh, adjust the height and adjust the, the loop where you need it, where you want it. I like mine kind of just touching the water, straight up and down. Beaver will pass through it to get up here to my mound. And that's a completed set right there. That's all there is to it, guys. Pretty simple. All right, guys, we've moved quite a little ways down the bank here. We'll go ahead and slap in a foothold here with a caster mound. It's basically the same thing. Just cut your trough back. Give that beaver a place to come. And the only difference is I want this, I want this berm of dirt left out here in front of where the trap's gonna be. Beaver have an automatic reaction that everything they bump with their chest, they put their feet down. Slick this up good, make it look like a beaver been going up here. They put their front feet down. So I want this berm of dirt out here in front of my trap. So that way when he hits that with his chest, he puts his feet down, he steps over into the trap. Takes a lot of the guessing by golly out of it. Slap us a little mound up there. You don't even have to really, but I always do just because it's what I do. Get our cable out here, stake our trap off. We got some rain coming in here tonight, so stake it up just a little higher than what I usually would. Take my spade. And I cut a bed for the trap on the downstream side of the, of the approach. Okay, that's very important. A beaver's going to come in on the downstream side because that's the way the current is, is uh, guiding him. Take this old number three, Northwoods. Five pounds of pan tension. You're set. Loose jaw with the center of the mound. Down in the bed. Make sure it's seated down in there good. We'll give this one a little shot of Swamp Master. Set for a front foot catch. But we'll take him by the back foot if that's how he wants to come. We don't care, we ain't picky. As long as he's here in the morning when we get here. And that's it guys, that's a completed set. I'll uh, spin the camera around right here right quick and let y'all look at them. With the sun and the shadows, I don't know how well it's going to show up, but you can see we've got our trough cut. Trap is bedded right here, pan center. We're back, oh, probably 10, 11, 12 inches from our mound. Uh, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it up there, but there's our snare hanging up there. And uh, we are down the road to the next spot. Okay, Dale, here's the other set. Uh, the uh, snares right over there. Here's the one I was telling you about. No big log here. Got my hole set in here. You can see the hole. My trap set right here in the kind of the front. Uh, just kind of had moved these. A lot of pine straw in here. We're, where are we trapping at in here? Uh, nothing but pines. And so, uh, anyway, uh, just kind of raked a little bit of that pine straw back where it wouldn't be so thick. And um, just let me know. Uh, got my trout set right there. It's got a little bit of a set down, inch or so. But uh, like I said, do I need to put more pine straw back around up in this area kind of 
uh, you just let me know what I need to do. Uh, like I said, there's my neighbor's field right here. Uh, I wanted to try to put some out here on the edge, but my neighbor's kids, they ride up and down uh, up in here. And uh, so they don't ever come over here in my hunting club. This is my hunting club. So um, anyway, I just wanna, want you to look at this and tell me what I'm doing wrong. All right, we're gonna go check some more sets out and I'll let you know on them. All right, guys, there's a beaver down there. Got him tied up there in a snare. Looks like about a two or two and a half year old. Uh, pretty nice kind of beaver the way he looks from here. So uh, we'll go down there and uh, take a better look at him maybe. Oh yeah, a fine specimen of a beaver. Just uh, chilling out here. We're on a, see if I can get all this. We're on a major creek here and uh, we're just road trapping and we're just right off the bridge in the right of way. Uh, got a little feeder ditch that comes in here and uh, got a really nice point. Anytime you got these points, guys, you want to take a look at them because I'm telling you, every beaver in the country is going to hit them. So uh, anyway, we'll get him dispatched and uh, get on our way and see what else we might have today. Been a really, really slow start for me. Uh, damn weather and rain and creeks up and down, I don't know, four, five, six days ago, this thing was... 14 feet high and around a bank full and I had traps down underneath the water and couldn't get to them for about four or five days It was It's been it's just been a slow 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 start here. So hopefully things are about to turn around and change for the better. I hope All right guys, we got another one right there uh, I don't know how well he's showing up, but looks like a right fair size beaver Kind of dug back in there a little bit but uh, anyway, he's caught the foothold. We'll, uh, we'll get him dispatched here, and then I'll show you all what he looks like. All right, guys, that is a big old beaver right there. And he was caught here, number three Bridger, by the front foot, not drowned. I don't believe she's got a, nope, not a bite mark one on her. You guys talk about how they get all bit up and everything. I'm telling you. I've trapped beaver in some of the highest populated places in the country. Now, South Arkansas, South Mississippi, and and in Louisiana, and and caught them this way. And uh, guys, I'm telling you, yeah, you're going to catch some bit up stuff. There's no doubt about it. But how many of them were bit before you ever caught them? Were they bit before you caught them in the trap, or were they bit after they got caught in the trap? That's the question that remains. So anyway, we're going to get this set put back in here and uh, get on our way. All right, guys, we're going to end this video here. Uh, I sure appreciate you all tuning in to watch. Hello, Timber. Like I said, I know this is kind of a short little deal. We're just kind of getting started. It's kind of been a slow deal for me. Uh, if you would, please, if you haven't already, if you hit that subscribe button for me and hit that thumbs up, hit that notification bell, I'd sure appreciate it. Until next time, this is Dale Billingsley with another one. Signing out.